Hey guys, this is James. And this is Denny from TDB, episode 40. Yep, here we are. And so what do we have today? We have Yi Fu Chun. Yeah, sounds like Chinese opera. Which is uh, another black tea from Yezi Tea. Thank you guys Yep, um, over there. And similar to the Qingpin, uh, or Qingpin, whatever, um, this one is also from Fujian. Mm-hmm. Um, and this one's a little bit more expensive, just so you guys know. Um, so I'm really excited to try this, uh, judging from how much I enjoyed the black tea from last episode. So we're going to do the exact same brewing parameters, um, 5.5 grams of dry leaf, 120 milliliters of um, in the gaiwan, and we'll fill it up, do a quick rinse. We'll actually take a look at the quality of the, the what I would traditionally call a rinse steeping. Um, and see if it needs a, a rinse or if we can actually just start straight from the gate. Yep. Um, so, yeah. And some then boiling water. Yeah. Some some things like Oriental Beauty, if you hadn't had a chance to catch um, kind of our previous episode with Tea Master's Oriental Beauty, uh, we actually went without a rinse for that one uh, because it was done without pesticides. And that's not actually black tea, but it's black tea like. Yeah. So, if it's a certain cleanliness, which it looks like this is not quite there. It's um, close, though. It's very close. Yeah. I, so I must say. It's a little say. bit cleaner than our uh, last tea, uh, for sure. Yeah. But, um, yeah. And you can judge that kind of just through the cloudiness, the clarity of the um, liqueur that you're looking at. Mm-hmm. So, very nice. kind of an uh, oranges rinse. Also, noticed you went, um, you did a slightly long rinse. Is there any, um, have you been experimenting with something like that? You know, I think that because green and black tea is specifically. Um, have a like a shorter uh, longevity in terms of steeping. Um, I think that usually you want to get the first steeping to be nice and solid, and so extending the rinse time just a bit, not crazy, but just a bit, is a great idea for that. Um, with something like an oolong, it's really just rinsing off the leaves because they're going to take so much time to expand by themselves anyway. Yeah, for a rolled oolong. Yeah, rinse. precisely. Yeah. So we're going to just heat our teaware a little bit here. Uh, haphazardly, and obviously, um, we don't go crazy about the ceremonial aspect of the tea brewing, but yeah. go ahead and do that if you like. Yep. Um, we're here just for the taste, mostly. So, well, I'm getting less of an aroma off of this, but go ahead and give that a smell to what you think. Mm. Mm, similar. No. Yeah, I agree, actually. No. Um, and so, I think that we'll see sort of the quote-unquote texture and body of this um, tea might expel the difference of the, uh, the quality there. Yep. So the leaves are slightly bigger. It's mm-hmm. something that Denny commented towards me uh, uh, pre-brewing. Um, and it looks very nice. It looks like um, we'll see how these leaves expand, but it looks like pretty high-quality leaves. Yeah, absolutely. And so, you know, James, I've been drinking a lot of black tea recently um, and find it really, really enjoyable um, especially with, as it's been a little bit colder, uh, I find that it's very energizing kind of midday, maybe slightly before five, but, um, for you, uh, what's, what's your, how do you, what's situate, my cup of tea? Yeah. What, what's, how do you situate black tea in your daily life? I do not. Right. Um, so I, I, during this time I have dark teas too, similar to Denny, I do gravitate towards the darker teas, but for me, those tend to be more roasted oolongs, occasionally an aged oolong or ripe pu'er. Or aged raw pu'er. Um, aged oolongs and aged raw pu'er, of course, tend to run on the pricey end of things. But um, if my hand, if I have my hands on such things, I'll, I will drink them frequently. Hmm. Probably. Yeah. Let's give this a go. Yeah. Beautiful. Again, the saturation of color here is lovely. A little bit more orangish than last time. Yeah, I Orange-ish agree. Orangish red. And let's uh, let's give it a taste. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Getting a little bit more um, of the kind of hay, uh, barley, you know, kind of those like, I don't know what you would, sort of barn tastes. <laughs> it's weird, weird to say, but interesting. I get a little bit less flavor out of this and a little bit more interesting kind of mouth stuff happening, like kind of 
I was talking about silkiness last time. I think I have that even stronger this time, uh, especially kind of at the front end. Yeah, you know what? I totally agree, actually. And um, But I will say this, that I actually think that the flavor lasts longer. I think you might be right. Yeah. yeah. So It's also a little bit sweeter than the last two. Mm-hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, this is, this is quite lovely, especially for a first steeping. It's not going to be the strongest one. Again, we're trying to kind of accomplish that with the rinse, but um, yeah, it's it's still really lovely. The I think... The tea itself evolves in my mouth uh, a little bit more than the last one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so this ratio of about five and a half grams per 120 milliliters. So that's for you. That's kind of on the low end of things, as opposed to like a pu'er or oolong. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So and I, I think again, exercising restraint when it comes to trying out a new black tea like we're doing, just sort of fresh. We don't. We've never had this before. We don't know the brewing parameters. I think that. Airing on the side of safety in terms of leaf quantity is going to be your safe bet, and then increasing it because using too much leaf with black tea, in my experience, and you know, there's always going to be tea folks out there who are going to say that you can fill the whole guy one up with leaf, use completely boiling water, and leave it forever. Sure, that's fine, but um, at least for this, you know, for black teas in general, I think that 30 seconds filling the guy one up to a quarter to a third of the way full, and really, you know tasting it and seeing how that goes I think that's the, your best bet overall so what are your uh, what's your daily cup of uh, black tea you know um, I had tried out this um, high mountain Aulao mountain uh, black know, tea yeah. and uh, from Yunnan sourcing and I loved it so I think I got there spring 2000 um, 13 and then I got there summer 2013 or autumn or, that's right, I'm sorry, Autumn, yeah, and um, I think we went in on that same order together, and yeah. I purchased, like, five ounces or ten ounces or some egregious amount of the tea, and I've been going through it on, it's definitely my black tea daily drinker, I love it, I think it's so tasty, um, and people really, really appreciate it when I bring it to them, so, yeah, it's it's pretty lovely, um, and uh, that has much more of a floral sweetness mm-hmm. that I think you would see out of something like a... Um, in Oriental Beauty, and I'm getting much more of um, that kind of bittersweet, chocolatey um, taste out of this. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. This is this is very nice. Yeah. Um, and just so you know, that black tea, the terroir, would be very different from this tea, which is from Fujian. Uh, that tea is from Yunnan, so right. um, just a whole different geographical region than... Um, the Ifu Chan. So second steeping, um, I think that the same time is going to be good, uh, but I do agree with your assessment that it, it had a lighter flavor uh, to start out. Mm-hmm. Um, so it does depend on your taste. If you, you know, I'm sighing now, if you want to have tea with cream and sugar, then I would say go for a longer steep time, but just don't do that. Don't do that with good tea. Just don't do that. Do that with oh, your... Oh, yeah, don't do that with good tea. Yeah. D- just period. You like can do that with your Starbucks. $14 an ounce, and yeah. you're going to do that? No. Right. Don't, don't do that. And the cream in the actual milk b- binds to the um, antioxidants inside of the tea and renders that uh, less healthy. Not less healthy, but not as healthy. So yeah. If you're looking to drink tea regularly for the health benefits of it, adding the milk products are going to actually pretty much... Counteract it. that, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Um, and for those of us that are lactose intolerant, such as myself, then uh, then you'll have a whole different scent of negative health benefits <laughs> to these things. That's absolutely the case. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if it's uh, I don't know if it's just because I had too much tea today, or we drank a tea before this. Both of those could definitely be the case, but I am getting an elevated feeling right now. No doubt. I have been, yeah, I have been going nonstop today on the phone and also drinking ripe poor at the same time. So That's a bad combination. <laughs> phone and ripe poor, you're just going to go crazy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling energized to say the least. Yeah. Um, very wonderful, warm, um, uplifted sensation in my body. Love it. Yep. Yeah. So, um, second seeping, let's do it. Yeah. Cheers. So slightly bolder color, but still not quite as uh, bold of a red as the last tea. That's right. Very nice. 
very nice. I think um, it's evened out perfectly. Yeah, this is very nice. You brewed that very well for the second, Steve. Mm. Uh, what, you went about 30 seconds again? Yeah, yeah. Same same parameters. Um, I think that it's just a little bit fuller on the front end, and uh, it still has that lovely just kind of yeah. descending finish. It's and lovely. Some nice fruit in this, I feel like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Notes of the sort of familiar chocolate taste, um, yep, that kind sure. of roasted taste. Um, lovely. Very smooth. I'm going to take a whiff of this aroma. Yeah. Um, I would say, actually, mm. the aroma is stronger for uh, the Qingpin than this tea. But uh, that's not necessarily a bad thing at all. Not in at all. fact, I think I prefer this tea in general. Mm -hmm. But um, that is something interesting to know. I actually um, get a sweet floral uh, end to this that um, I wasn't getting... From the the earlier tea. Yeah, the, I think this is uh, yeah, definitely a bit more complex. Yeah. Um, so, you you drink your uh, daily black teas kind of before five p.m. Mm -hmm. When would you have this? Would you have this kind of as a similar replacement for that tea, or would you? You know, I, nicer teas like this. Um, share them with someone who I know will appreciate it. Um, someone who I think would be. Uh, able to uh, experience the differences in tea, so I would probably use this to contrast a different a different black tea as well. Yeah, kind of um, like we just did, actually. Yeah. We're Is filming it? 39 and 40 back-to-back. -back. Right. Um, so, and then, you know, selfishly, I would probably do this after a meal, but give myself a good hour or so until my palate has kind of uh, cleansed itself a little bit, um, and, and yeah, and, and just sort of pay attention to this tea. I think... Um, the first one, maybe you could be the, the Qingpin, Qingpin? Yeah, Qingpin. Um, you could maybe be a little bit less in the moment, um, whatever that may mean, um, and still really enjoy it, but I think the, the depth of this really comes out when you're sort of focused on it, thinking about it. Maybe you take notes on your thing, maybe you do some weird YouTube show. <laughs> or you write on Steepster, who knows? Who knows what you want to do, um, but... Yeah, I think paying attention to a tea like this is worthwhile, to say the least. Yeah, Definitely. This tea is very nice. Really lovely. The leaves have just opened up into beautiful, long strands, yep. filling up the gaiwan in a, in a lovely um, kind of roasted um, um, brown. Yeah, a little red in there. And um, I totally agree with you as well. It's not nearly as aromatic, but it's totally tasty. Really great. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Why don't we wrap it there? Okay. Well, James... If I were someone who wanted to learn more about tea, what would you recommend I do? Well, um, you should come visit us at tdb.org. Um, yes. Please check us out on YouTube. Subscribe. Hit that subscribe button over here or here. I don't know where it is. Um, <laughs> hit us up on Twitter. Um, if you have a tea that you'd like us to review, if you're a vendor or whatever, please, please shoot us a tweet, an email, whatever. I'm happy to take a look and, and taste your tea. Yeah. Um, other than that, uh, please check out Yazi Tea as well. They have a lot of, a very diverse selection of teas, a lot of oolongs. They said, they told me they were very, very proud of their black teas, so please check these two guys out. Um, other than that, uh, we will see you guys next time. Cheers.